Hey my friends, Sean Tierney here coming to you from the studios at theautomationschool.com and in this episode of The Automation Show, we're continuing our HMI series and now we're going to start doing Data Highway Plus and uh, we're going to start all the way back in the 90s with the panel view standard. So I have two units here, I have a panel view uh, 600 and then I have a panel view 1000. Now this one uh, the 1000 is keypad only and it's also grayscale. The 600 is color, of course all 600s were color. And this one is a combination keypad and touch. So um, these two units, I believe these were donated by uh, the good folks over at Horizons. And a huge shout out to them. Um, great people over there. Um, and uh, so we're going to use these two today in the show. But before we do that, I just want to say a quick thank you to our patrons who support the automation show and blog. If you want to learn more about becoming an insider and all the free rewards they get, check us out over at patreon.com forward slash automation. So with that said, let's go ahead and go over to the computer here and uh, put my glasses on here. Try not to trip over. I get so many wires now <laughs> in the office from all the different shows we've been doing. And um, let's see. So you can see my uh, Data Highway Plus here. I got the 5. I got the Slick 504. I got the Panel View 600 and 1000 and of course the DHRO card. I don't have a, uh, I don't have a PCMK card. I don't have a PKTX card. So I really have no way to get to uh, Data Highway Plus directly from my PC without going through the uh, the gateway. Of course, um, I do have the ANC cable as well. Um, but in any case, I don't think, um, I've tried and tried and I have not been able to download the programs through these guys through the gateways. So um, we'll have a serial connection this is now this is not a null modem this is straight through when you go plc to pc when you go to alan bradley plc to pc both devices are dtes okay so you need a null modem or crossover cable but when you go um, pc to panel view right 99.9 .9 percent of every panel view ever made by rockwell is a dce serial port device okay i think the only uh the only one that wasn't was a um Maybe the panel view component, but all your standard panel views, panel view pluses, they're all DCE serial ports. So you need a straight through cable to go from your PC to your panel view. And we'll be just doing DF1, so you could use a USBS if you want to, etc. But in any case, let's get back to programming. Let's open up Panel Builder 32. And we'll create a new application. And we'll do the 600 first. Panel view 600, DH plus. Keypad and touch, and my rev is just one rev back here. 400 through 409. Okay, we'll call it, a, give it a name here, TAB. I'm going to move that serial cable. <laughs> we'll call it uh, PVS for standard. And then we'll call it DHP for Data Highway Plus. Um, everything looks good. Yeah, let's hit OK. We'll create that. There she is. I want to go into the terminal settings here. And let's see, I want the auxiliary port to be for upload and download, not for printing. Of course, you can change that in the configuration menu, but it's nice to have it defaulted by default. And is there anything else in comp set up? Well, I can enter my nodes since I'm here. So let's hit insert. And we'll do PLC5 for our first node. And that was address zero. And I think I have a 520 installed here. And the next one will be our SLC504. That's at node address one. And that is a slick 500. There she is. Excellent. Okay. And the terminal address, I really want the first one to be address three. Okay. So good there. Good there. Now tags. Okay. That's the next thing we need to do. Let's insert a tag here. Tag name will be, let's see, mold. Whoops. Mold speed. One matter of fact, I'll put PLC five old speed one, and that's going to be an integer signed integer. Don't need a description, that'll be for the PLC five and N753. That's where the mold speed is in my ladder program or my PLC program for my VOC course, which is what we're using here in Studio B. All right, and I'm going to duplicate that a few times, and we'll do. Mold speed two, mold speed three, mold speed four. Okay. And I'll change these to 63. I try to keep everything simple. 
and lined up in my code so it'd be easy for students to remember when they're taking the VUSE course. Okay, and actually, this should be actually mold speed one. Mold one speed. <laughs> so let me change these really quick. Three and four. Each uh, PLC can control up to five low molding machines. So let me go ahead and select these and I'll duplicate it. And now we'll do the slicks. So this will be SLC. And I'll go ahead and speed up the video here. Okay, now let me sort this uh, column here. So we got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, 50, 60, 70, 80, 50, 60. All right, that looks good. Well, except these, I get to change the node to slick 500. Okay, communication's done. Tag's done. Now it's time to design our screen here. Screen one. Let's go ahead and do like we did before. We'll start with a, let's see here. Screen selector. That's what I want. Go to config. Put that down there. Okay. Now we'll get some text here. Text. Put it right up here. We'll call this, let's see, SLC 504. And then we'll get some numeric displays here. Let's see. There it is. Numeric data display. Okay. Maybe we can move this guy over. Okay. So, tag. What tag? This will be speed one. Old one speed. Excellent. Now we'll uh, copy paste. Two, three. That'll be good enough. All right. Speed two. And three. Okay. So now we can copy all of that. Put it there. Change this to PLC 5, and I'll go through and update these. Mold speed 1, mold 2 speed, and mold 3 speed. Excellent. So let's do a uh, application validate all, see if it's uh, good. No errors. So now We'll try downloading a couple different ways. Let's try downloading through RS links, right? And we'll try going through the Ethernet and the DHRIO. Um, let's see here. That's the EMBT. There's the DHRIO. Channel A. You can see the panel view out there, right? Let's try to download and see what happens. See if it works. All right, after a few minutes has gone by, it finally says, hey, it didn't work. No commands received from the operated terminal. So I'm just assuming that just doesn't work. I, I went on Rockwell's website and they had no documentation available to the public about this. So, you know, trial and error just doesn't seem to work. So let's cancel out of there and uh, we'll do it uh, via serial here. So we'll go to download and uh, let me go ahead and come out here to the field and plug in the serial cable here. Again, this is a straight through cable. Actually, it's a null modem cable with another null modem adapter on it, so it makes it a straight through. But uh, because the device is a DC device, like we talked about earlier, you have to have a straight through cable. So let's do, well, we could try to do this internal COM port one. Let's see if I'm using COM one in here. I think I am. Let's go to configuration. I think I am. I think I'm using this one right here, DF1-2. Yep, and we can see that panel view I just plugged into. So let's come over here and we'll do DF1 point to point to ABDF1-2. Okay, let's try that. All right, yeah, that one's working. So let me go ahead and speed up the video here.
All right, and you can see everything's working. We have our data from a 504 and a PLC5, and um, everything's good. Now, let's do this. Let's edit the program to put it into our 10-inch screen and download that and have them both running at the same time. So what are we going to do here? Well, first, we'll save our uh, program here, and then we'll do a file save as. We'll put, uh, let's see, 10K in there. All right. Now let's go ahead and terminal settings and it's going to be a 1000 gray keypad only, right? Yeah, that's a keypad only. Okay. And for comm setup, I do want to change his node to node four. They can't be the same node on the network. Both panel views have to have unique addresses. So we'll do this and let's see what happens. It's going to try to reformat my screens says, hey, some objects may not be visible. It may not convert correctly. Colors may not be right. So uh, it's all done. No errors found. So that's what it's going to look like. So now let me move the uh, serial cable from the uh, 600 here. Move him over. And plug it into, whoops, I got the cable under there. Okay, got to keep these guys at a little angle or else uh, it doesn't show up great on the uh, doesn't show up great on the camera. Let's see here. Back out a little bit. Okay. Let's pull the panel view up here. You can see the serial port on that guy. And let's plug her in. Okay. All right. How are we looking? Looking crooked. <laughs> All right, straighten them out a little bit. There we go. All right. So now let's come back over here and do a download. Ah, it says, hey, you got a problem. This is a keypad only. You got to give it a, a, a function key. I think it did it for me automatically. Let's go check. Yep, function key one. That's great. You know what? Let's edit that text here. I was telling somebody uh, up on LinkedIn that one of the things with Panel Builder 32 is some objects, when you double click on them, like on text, when you double click on them, you can put the text right there, right? But there are some objects like this go to config button. How do you change the text, right? This used to drive people crazy. You actually have to use this inner text button. That used to drive people nutso when, they, when it first came out in the early 90s. So with that done, let's save it again. Yes. Overwrite. And let's... Uh, download it. Again, it's DF1 point to point. Okay, and I'll speed up the video here again. All right, now you can see we have both of them up, both of them reading the data. Let me see if I get a little bit closer there. See what the numbers are. They should be identical. Um, 126, 151, 126, 151. So that's it. That's how easy it is to um, create a Panel Builder 32 application for Panel View standard uh, screens, operator interfaces, and uh, get them to talk to a PLC 5 SLIC 500. And with that, that's the end of this episode. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and a like. And uh, if you'd like to help support the show and the blog, visit us over at patreon.com forward slash automation. And uh, if you know anybody who needs Panel View Plus training, I don't yet have a Panel View standard. I don't get a lot of calls for that, but if you know anybody that needs Panel View Plus training, please ask them to check out my uh, course, Panel View Plus Core Basics, PVP Core Basics, over at theautomationschool.com. And with that, I just want to wish everybody to have a great week. And until next time, my friends, peace.